A new United Nations report warns the impacts of climate change are increasing and inevitable. The consequences for nature and humanity are sweeping and severe. We have about 150 years of infrastructure and investment and culture around fossil fuel driven energy. We now have to transition into low carbon or zero carbon power. And the massive challenge is we have to do this in a very short period of time. The ICCT works on two problems, air pollution and climate change, because the transportation sector contributes mightily to both of them. There are government agencies in the top vehicle markets in the world that regulate motor vehicle emission standards and fuel standards for 85% of all the vehicles sold into the world. We've been hearing, for example, on the truck fleets, it's not the vehicle, it's the infrastructure. And so the principal objective of the ICCT is to bring them together. Talking about the propulsion, not talking about the ship design. Yeah, no, we need to go back to designing ships the way ships used to be designed, and to be aqua and aerodynamic. Then we try to level the playing field by giving those agencies the information and support they need in order to be head-to-head -head with the manufacturers that they're talking to. We will do real primary research and develop the technical analysis that agencies need in order to support their regulations. ICCT is a major contributor to policy debates from a scientific perspective. ICCT was the first organization which estimated how much black carbon, for example, is being emitted by ships and what is the climate impact of black carbon from shipping sector. In London today, more than 100 countries started to talk about cutting emissions from shipping. Until they produced that research, we were not talking about estimation of the global inventory of black carbon. They are trying to revolutionize the way ships have been operated. We believe in government, we believe in the power of government to do good. Most of these technical challenges are surmountable. It's a question of what system design and infrastructure is the most cost effective and practical. We create international best practices and we help governments learn from each other. We did stumble upon Volkswagen cheating on their motor vehicle emission standards. Volkswagen had deliberately manipulated vehicle emissions with software. If you're a VW shareholder or employee today, the letters stand for very worried. The European governments then started testing and they found that virtually every manufacturer had software on their vehicles that if sold in the United States would be an illegal defeat device. 10,000 deaths per year could be attributed to small particle pollution. All of a sudden, European cities realize that they're breathing unhealthy air because the cars, the diesel cars that they thought were clean, they are heavy polluters. And we have premature deaths as a result of this high level of diesel exposures. So let's be clear about this. Our company was dishonest. And in my German words, we have totally screwed up. Diesel gate has had a much bigger impact than placing penalties to Volkswagen for cheating. It's impacting how we're going to move forward to electric cars and hopefully address climate change and cleaner air. The times they are a changing, at least when it comes to New York City buses. China plans to raise its emission standards to a new level. California is now moving in the direction of electric vehicles. In India, petrol and diesel are a thing of the past. Electric vehicles are the future. I am fairly hopeful about our ability to make a massive improvement in the climate problem over the next decade. The levers are not complicated. It's a combination of continued energy efficiency improvements and then electrification. What 
ICCT have done is brought in stakeholders from, from lots of different backgrounds to be able to come in into sort of a blue sky, clean slate, what are the challenges, how do we move forward, and that's what we need in our world today is we need solutions. When you look at the targets that we need for 2030, which is let's say 35% electric vehicle penetration globally, when you look at what the manufacturers have said they are already planning to do, we're in striking distance of that number. Lots of things can go wrong, but we can also see a pathway to getting pretty close, and that's exciting.